Welcome back to our channel ladies and gentlemen I want to appreciate you for taking your time to be part of us and I hope that this video finds you well wherever you are Kenya continues to grab international media headlines Recently William Samoy Ruto volunteered to export uh, the Kenya police service to the Caribbean nation Haiti to help restore peace and tranquility in that area because it is ridden by a lot of violence. Now this move is not a walk in the park because this week the President of the United Nations Security Council must present Kenya's request to the Security Council members to debate and vote on it. And if they get the green light, then William Ruto, of course, will be sending the policemen there. But before the dust settles on this matter, there is an international watchdog, international human rights watchdog held, uh, led by the human rights. And they are opposing this move. In fact, they have written to the President of the uh, United States. President Joe Biden to reconsider his support to William Ruto because they say that this move is tantamount to Kenya exporting police brutality and other bad behavior to the violence ridden Caribbean nation Haiti. And they are citing several examples. They are not just looking at the recent police brutality against the demonstrators, the anti-government demonstrations, those who went to lament and present their petition against the high cost of living. They are dating back to the curfew that happened during the corona pandemic. In fact, if you didn't know, human rights watchdog always have archives and they monitor everything that is happening. So they say they have been watching very closely the behavior of the Kenyan police and the behavior is wanting. Recently, the police targeted a particular community, especially in Kisumu. And if you go there, even in the hospitals up to date, we have bodies that are riddled with bullets. Some of them are still waiting for operations. And, 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 and there's new supporters who are really maimed and killed. The police arrested with brutal force, in fact, abducted several Azimio leaders. And so this has attracted the attention of these uh, rights groups. And they are saying that Kenya must not be allowed. But then if you look at the composition of the uh, United Nations Security uh, Council members, it is divided right in the middle because already the United Nations, through already the USA, through the, their Secretary of State, Mr. Blinken, they pressed William Ruto's bid and move to support peace. They are citing Ruto's statements on the recent coup in Niger, where President Bazoum was, uh, uh, was hosted by the head of the Presidential Guard. Ruto also tried to, uh, in fact, he was uh, appointed by the IGAD to act as a uh, neutral arbiter in the war ridden um, Sudan, where there are two camps of military fighting. Of course, one camp rejected Ruto because they said Ruto was never neutral. And so we, we all know that we have peacekeeping uh, submissions in, in, in uh, Congo. And so William Ruto is presenting himself as someone, a president who loves peace. But the human, uh, the international human watchdog is asking a very pertinent question. Why is it that the police is killing people under the very watch of William Samoy Ruto? Because William Ruto is the commander in chief of all the armed forces. So they say that William Ruto orders the police to kill Kenyans, yet he wants to take them to... Haiti and they are opposing this. So if you look at the composition of the United Nations Security Council, I'm just looking at it, 
The composition is China, France, Russian Federation, United Kingdom and, 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 and uh, United Kingdom of the Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and then we have the United States of America. Now, if you try uh, to imagine how they are going to vote, already the United States has already applauded William Ruto and they are praising him for his move. They have welcomed this. The United Kingdom and the United States are always twin brothers. They support each other. And so they will vote yes. And of course, I'm, I'm imagining that Northern Ireland will also vote yes. So those are three nations. So we are left with the Russian Federation, France and China. Something tells me that Russia will not accept. Already you know that uh, in the recent Russia-African uh, summit, Russia welcomed some of the, uh, the, of the presidents that successfully staged a coup. And this attracted a lot of, uh, of, of uh, reaction from the U.S. And they're saying that Russia is supporting coup. And William Ruto also even went ahead and warned Vladimir uh, Putin. So Russia will not support this. I have a feeling. China may also not support, though China sometimes want to remain neutral, but of late I have seen them trying to, you know, forge a formation with, the, with, with the Russia. And so France is also another one. So if France, China and Russia vote together, then this will mean that we have United Kingdom, Great Britain, okay, United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, United States. It will be 3-3. I don't know where that leaves us. Maybe the president of the Security Council will be allowed to vote now and see what happens. But the Security Council is divided in the middle. The challenges that the Kenya police is, is, is facing, number one, is that the local people say is that, number one, apart from the brutality, they don't have international exposure. The Kenya police have got very little. They have never gone overseas for peacekeeping. If it was maybe our military personnel, we'd, we'd say, okay, some of them have gone to Somali. We had taken some to Sierra Leone. They have at least uh, some little confidence and experience. So that experience, interna international and overseas exposure, is something the Kenyan security uh, police service post is, is, is facing. Number two, Haiti speaks French. As the national language but in Kenya we use English and Kiswahili so they are saying that there is going to be a language barrier and you see the, the problem with language barrier coupled with the fact that our policemen are brutal they will beat people because you don't understand French you don't know what someone's doing maybe there will be a curfew and when you are in, in an area where there is a curfew and someone is late then you ask them why they are late, they don't understand English, you don't understand French. What happens in that scenario is that they will kill even more people, they are also vulnerable, going to an area which is very, very delicate. And so they are saying, this must be considered, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you think, but I think our appetite to please the international community is not very good. You already have seen when William Ruto poked his nose into the affairs of Sudan, they later came and hacked very vital government services and for sometimes the services stalled. I think William Ruto must consider because others are also asking. We have, have Africa has got about 54 nations, but they are not willing to donate soldiers or policemen to the Haiti. Why Kenya? And this is a question that many are asking. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the president of the, Uni uh, the United Nations Security Council presents the Kenyan case, we are waiting to see how things are going to happen. But the cases of extrajudicial killing and extra force is something that is haunting, haunting Ruto and the, inter uh, and, and the Kenya police. We in Kenya still want to ask President Ruto to listen to the people and stop police brutality.